Hey, good morning, JVox. It is so good to be here in the building. We've got an awesome episode coming up for you right now. We love making services that help you grow closer to Jesus Christ as a middle schooler. And so I'm so excited for today. We've got uh, Danny preaching today. We've got a game coming up. We've got some awesome things coming in the next couple weeks. So get ready for the rest of JVox. Real quick, I've got a little game just to get us in the JVox mood. Okay, so we're gonna play. It's called the Internet Names Animals. I think this is what happened. People went and they couldn't remember the name of an animal, so they Google searched it. And this is the word that they used for the animal. And so I'm gonna give you the word and you have to tell me what the animal is. A stab rabbit, stab rabbit. Drop in the comments right now. What is a stab rabbit, right? Um, man, it, so it's gotta be like mammalian and also dangerous. Yeah, it's a porcupine. Danger noodle, danger noodle. Okay, um, I, I'm really hoping it's very long, um, but dangerous. And I don't know, noodles aren't dangerous. Even wet noodles aren't dangerous. Oh, it's a snake. That's a perfect danger noodle face right there. Look at that. Mouth open, launching at you, that snake. All right, Muppet Claw. <laughs> Muppet Claw, drop in the comments what Jim Henson's animal would be. A Muppet Claw. I think of sloth. There it is. Muppet Claw sloth. He looks so happy. I don't know if you can see this. Real quick, he's so, he's got like the nicest, thoughts just seem like nice guys, you know? Trash Panda. Y'all, do you know what a Trash Panda, also, who is the person that went into Google and was like, I can't Trash Panda, and what they actually meant was raccoon. Come on, people. Uh, I just want you to know that because of this, in my house, I call raccoons Trash Pandas. Pantless Thunder Goose. It just feels so powerful and also so uh, mischievous, right? <laughs> the pantless thunder goose. What do y'all got? What do y'all got? Drop it in the comments. It's an ostrich. It's, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Look how ferocious thunder goose. There should be a TV show called Thunder Goose. I'd watch it. I don't know what it, it, okay. Pan the Thunder Goose TV show is about an ostrich that fights crime. Startled murder balloon. Y'all, what do you got for startled murder balloon? It's gotta be skittish. It's gotta be fearful. And also dangerous. Like a puffer fish. Y'all, have y'all ever y'all ever tried to touch one? They're terrifying. They just <laughs> and you feel like you're gonna die if you touch it. Yeah. Murder fit. Look at, look, he looks so dangerous. Those eyes are just intimidating. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is the last one. Fuzzy squeak potato. Makes you feel like something that you can just squish, you know, like squeak. I, you shouldn't squish anything that just because it squeaks. It's actually, it's actually how most of these die because it's a guinea pig. And you know that there was a little kid who was like, oh, it squeaks. Right? No, don't do that. Fuzzy. Squeak Potato, JVox, that is it for the internet names animals. I hope it changes the way that you talk about every single one of these animals for the rest of your life. But right now, we've got an awesome message coming from your one and only Danny Perez. JVox, get ready.
Last September, I went to lunch with some friends at Surfside, and we decided to go to Keg and Cow because that was our typical spot. But we showed up 10 minutes too early, and they weren't ready to serve us. What was wild is was that, was that they didn't allow us to even come inside and wait. So what we had to do was wait outside, and we, we were so like confused. Like, why not just let us in and wait? So uh, we had to decide whether to wait those 10 minutes or go ahead and head to another restaurant. But uh, one of my friends got frustrated, and he made the decision to go ahead and go over to Woody's that was a few shops down. So we all hopped in our cars, and we all got going. But uh, right when we got there, right when we were about to walk in the door, uh, he stops in his tracks, and he, he, was, he was just remembering how much he really wanted Keg and Cal's uh, chicken sandwich. So we all ended up hopping back in our cars. We all ended up going back to Keg and Cow and having lunch. We're always running into decisions like this that we have to make, uh, often more serious than this, but uh, often we don't know what to choose. So if you're like me, you often will just sit there and wrestle through the choices, weighing the pros and cons forever, but uh, this can drive you crazy, and it's oftentimes not really much help. Other times we decide to reach out and ask for advice, but... Uh, whether it's a friend or it's a family member, um, you know, we, we wonder if they have some advice that can help us out. But even when they do give us advice, it's not always perfect. I remember in 11th grade, uh, I was talking to my friend Christian about what degree I wanted to get in college. And uh, I told him mine, but he kind of pushed back on me. He was saying how, you know, how could I not go into a math and science career? And he told me that uh, I should really be pursuing that instead of what I wanted to pursue. Um, and I was good in math. I was good in science. But I knew that's not where God wanted me. So uh, his advice really didn't help me out. But rather than average advice, uh, God calls us to look to him. In James, 1, chap- in James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all. God doesn't just give us our opinion, but he chooses to give us wisdom. When God gives us wisdom, it helps us make the right choice because we begin to see things from his perspective. As a good father, he wants to help us out. He knows what situation we're in, and he knows what type of help that we need and how to help us best. So there are three main ways that God gives us wisdom. The first of those ways is the Bible. So in 1 Timothy, uh, my bad, in 2 Timothy 3, it tells us that the Bible is the very words of God. In history, God chose specific people to write down exactly the words that he wanted written. And because the Bible is God's words, uh, it has the power to even speak to us today. So throughout the Bible, there are, there are pieces of wisdom that we can apply to our lives. The wisdom that he gives helps us make the right choices, whether it's treating someone properly or avoiding temptation or choosing to honor authorities or not being lazy. But along with this, there are many situations that the Bible doesn't give us wisdom for. You know, We like the decision to either go to a specific school or to get a certain job. The Bible doesn't have a straight answer for that. It's not like I can open a Bible and flip it halfway and I can see a line that says, Jaden is supposed to be a lawyer. Eli is supposed to be a mechanic. And Lana is supposed to be a veterinarian. You know, since wisdom is limited in the Bible, uh, there are two other ways that God chooses to give us wisdom. Uh, One of those ways is prayer. And prayer is simply just having a conversation with God. Um, It's as simple as just choosing to talk with a friend. You know, often in my prayers, I'll just say like, hey, Jesus, or good morning, Jesus. Like, it's just a real genuine conversation. And God just asks us to to reach, uh, reach out to him and ask him what he thinks about the situation. And for us to, to get his opinion, to get his wisdom on the situation. You... You may be surprised on how willing God is to actually give us wisdom. I know for me, in my life, you know, there's been moments where God's given me a specific word or specific thought or idea that was exactly what I needed uh, from him in the moment to know what to do. In the book of 2 Chronicles, we hear about a king named Jehoshaphat. So in verses 1 and 2, it says this, 
the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Munites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Eden is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. And then his response to this news shows up in verse 12. It says, O oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against the mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. He didn't know what to do, so he waited in prayer for God to give wisdom on what decision to make in this moment. You know, God here in this moment, in this situation in the Bible, he was quick to, to give an answer, quick to give wisdom. But often in our lives, you know, God isn't always so quick. And in those moments, we need to choose to just sit in prayer and wait for him to help us out. So aside from the Bible and aside from prayer, God also gives us wisdom through other people. So um, God has put believers in our lives to be a source of wisdom for us. You know, they may have gone through a similar situation that we are going through now, and God can use them to tell us what they did. That way we can uh, understand from a godly perspective uh, what decision that we can make. You know, they're pretty much like real-life how-to videos. You've seen them all over YouTube, and they're amazing. Like, how to stay focused, how not to worry, uh, how to tie a balloon, how to make knives, how to fall asleep in two minutes, how to end a fight in two seconds, uh, how to solve a nine by nine Rubik's cube, how to cut your hair like an Egyptian, and even how to make the Chewbacca sound, which I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to make those. They know what they've done, uh, and they can show you what they've done so that they can help you. Sometimes they may not have an answer. You know, they may not have a how-to video um, of their life to show you, but uh, they can come alongside you in prayer and ask God for wisdom for the decision. So the main type of believers that can give you wisdom are, first and foremost, your parents. God has put them in your lives to train you to, to live a life that is fully in love with him. In Proverbs 1.8, it says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not reject your mother's teaching. God tells us to, to listen and to accept what they have to say because he put them there to say those words. And our parents aren't perfect. You know, they may, but if they choose to listen to what God has to say, uh, he can use them to help us. One of the biggest decisions that I've had to make was to decide what college I wanted to go to. I could either stay, go to FSW or I could go out of state to a different college, maybe even a better college. Um, at FSW, I could stay at home and I could uh, take classes that were easier, but at another college, I would be able to get, maybe study some more, uh, understand things a little better, and, but it may have even taken me out of the city. So I had to, to make a choice, and I honestly had no clue uh, what move to make. So what ended up happening was my, my parents constantly uh, were praying alongside me for months as I made this decision. I remember my mom spent hours discussing with me about the choice that I would have to make. And in the end, she helped me realize, um, she gave me wisdom to help me realize that um, if I moved on to a different college, I would have to leave JVox and I'd have to leave CLF. Um, and she helped me realize that in the moment that God is using me here and that God is training me here in these moments. So aside from parents, another type of believer that God uses to give wisdom is our leaders. So God has put them in our lives to come alongside your parents, to teach you and to train you uh, to live a life fully in love with God. And they're on the same mission as your parents, uh, but they get, to, they get to speak in a different way than your parents do. There's a man in the Bible uh, named Timothy, and Timothy had a leader, and his leader, and leader was named Paul, uh, which we're all pretty familiar with. Constantly, Paul was able to give wisdom to Timothy of how to be a godly leader. But since Timothy was young, uh, he, was, he would be criticized as he began to hop into a leadership role. Uh, but Paul gives him wisdom as his leader in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And it says this, Do not let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, 
in your purity. Paul's wisdom helped Timothy become the, God, the godly leader that, that God had wanted Timothy to be. It was Paul's wisdom that uh, kept him going, that motivated him and helped him make the right choice of staying as a church leader. You know, and your leaders care deeply about you. They put in time weekly uh, to invest in you and because they love you so much, uh, no matter how insignificant or how massive uh, your situation may be, uh, God wants to use them to help you find wisdom. So just willing, just be willing to, to reach out, just ask uh, for wisdom because they so want to be used by God to give you some. You know, Josh has been my leader uh, in JVox when I started eighth grade, all the way through Vox, and he's even uh, been a leader to me now. Um, through that time and even now, God has constantly used Josh to give me wisdom. Uh, I remember a moment in 11th grade where I, was, I had heard about an upcoming debate about, at my school about whether God exists or not. And obviously, honestly, I was terrified uh, to even consider going to this debate. Uh, but I knew that God could use me because I had recently learned about evidence to, to support God's existence. Uh, I remember talking to Josh about this decision, and he gave me some wisdom on it. He helped me understand how good God could use me, the reasons that I should uh, go ahead and step up into this opportunity, to, uh, how to talk in a way that was kind, in a, in a way that was helpful, and uh, even like what to talk about during the debate. So with parents, with leaders, uh, God also uses close friends and and siblings that are believers. Uh, these are people who live alongside you that God can use to give you wisdom of how to live in a way that God wants you to live. You know, these aren't just your typical friends that you have at school or your typical friends, even church-going friends, uh, but these are friends who are truly serious about living in a way that, uh, that, that God would want them to live. You know, and sometimes these people are the easiest to talk to and the easiest to hear from. You know, in Proverbs 17, 17, it tells us that a friend is always loyal and that a brother is born in a time of need. You know, other versions of this say in a difficult time. So uh, in these hard moments, in these difficult times, uh, God can use these friends and these siblings to, to give you wisdom about the decision to make. And even if they tell us a hard truth, uh, we know that they, they've done it out of love because they care for us so much, we, we're more willing to hear what they have to say. You know, there's been moments in my life where I've gotten to share wisdom with my brother Eli of how to uh, talk to unbelieving friends and how to share the good news of Jesus and how to invite them to church. Uh, I've had friends in my life who have taken time to uh, give me wisdom about a tough situation so that I can make it in a way that God would want me to. You know, and you may have these types of people in your life that give you wisdom, uh, but uh, a lot of times it can be hard to accept wisdom from them. You know, like if your parents tell you uh, that it's not wise to be hanging out with a certain friend, immediately you may think, you don't even know that friend. You don't even know what they're like. Uh, they may do some stupid things, but, uh, but they're, they're a good guy, you know? And, you know, as a friend, it may be hard to, as their friend, it may be hard to listen to what your parents have to say, um, but actually they may be influencing you in a bad way. So sometimes it's tempting to, to just ignore what your parents have to say or your leaders or your close friends or your siblings, um, but God has put them there to give us wisdom. You know, and if we're serious about listening to God's wisdom, uh, we have to be willing to hear what they have to say and accept it uh, when it's true. So with this, the question becomes, you know, how can I listen? How can I accept what they have to say when I really don't want to hear it? You know, I think the first thing that we can do is ask God for help. You know, we can ask God, we could pray to him that you know, he would give us a teachable spirit. You know, that he would give us soft hearts to be able to receive what they have to say and learn from it. You know, we can uh, ask God to help us realize that they're, there, they're here to help and not here to just give us a hard time or make life harder for us. Uh, and we can ask him to, 
to help us really and genuinely think of what they've said and if it can really help us in this situation. But I think also alongside asking God for help, um, in moments where we don't want to listen, uh, we need to, uh, instead of just shutting them out and pushing them aside, uh, we can choose to hear what they have to say. You know, let them say their thoughts and then, you know, say your thoughts afterwards. You know, have a conversation. It doesn't have to be a conflict. It doesn't have to be a one-sided argument, but it can just be a conversation of, here's what, here's what I've learned from God. Here is the experience that God has given me, and here's how I think it can help you out in this situation. So with all of this, you know, listening to the Bible, listening to God in prayer, listening to your parents, your friends, your siblings, and your leaders, uh, because God has put them in your life uh, to give you wisdom. So before we go, uh, I'd like to pray over all of us. So let's go ahead and pray, guys. God, I thank you so much for this Sunday morning. Thank you for putting people in our lives who can give us wisdom. Thank you for... Um, Thank you for your willingness to help us out and see things from your perspective. God, I pray that you would be with our hearts, that they would be soft, that we'd be willing to receive, that we would be teachable. God, I pray that you would help us to reach out to to these friends, leaders, and parents and siblings uh, when we do need wisdom uh, because you put them there for us. I pray that when they do give us wisdom, that we would not be quick to reject it, Uh, but that we would be open and that we'd be ready to receive it. God, I pray that you would um, continue to continue to help us live in a way uh, that you desire us to live. And we pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right, J-Box, man, that was so good. Love Danny's word. Uh, You need friends in your life that are uh, giving you wisdom that you can go to, that you can trust because they're close to God. Love it. Hey, real quick, just right now in the comments, would you just let Danny know what you got out of that, something that you liked out of that? Because it was good, right? Hey, I've got a couple things coming up that are just so important. Next Sunday, May 31st, we're going to do something totally different. We've been doing all of our stuff on YouTube live, but next week we're going to do something with all of JBox in a big Zoom call to celebrate our eighth graders. Okay, this is going to be their big graduation Sunday. So make sure that you guys um, find out how we're going to get on Zoom together for next Sunday so that you can be part of this awesome, awesome service. It's going to be a huge deal as we celebrate our eighth graders and we continue talking about influencers. I can't wait, right? Then the week after, we are going to be back live in JBox. So you won't be there, but we'll be here going live at 1115 with a full service in here. It's going to be something we've never done before. It's going to be so cool. Make sure that you tune in Sunday, June 7th, 1115 live. It's going to be unforgettable, okay? So, JVox, I love you. I'm so glad you were here this morning. Get ready to go to your Zoom groups later today, and I can't wait to see you guys next week. Love you.